how to use the new symmetry feature in Flame Painter 4, in particular with brushes. Now, you see there I've applied some brushes to the design and using symmetry. And the symmetry can be found there by the tools. And you can see what happens when you... I'm just going to go to a new document now. New. And then I'm going to set the size of the document. I'm going to go for a thousand by a thousand. So I'm just going to go pixels. Set that to a thousand, because obviously it's nice to have a nice sort of square document for symmetrical design. Don't have to, of course, but I'm just going to go to the symmetry. And what happens, you see this use symmetry. You can put that on or not. And rotational, and you can set that to two, four, eight, whatever, five, six. Now I'm going to go with four, and I'm just going to apply some brushes. Now there's a vast range of brushes available in Flame Painter 4. And I've added lots of new features, and I'm still actually discovering quite a few features that I, well, it's pretty amazing. But that one's applied using gradients and you can set up various repeat options as well. You can see the color changing through there for the gradient. And that's a very basic. For all the panels, just go to the window and you can see all the panels. You can change that and I'm just gonna go for 10 for the repeat. And I've, now what you can see is you've got the colors changing from, you can see the colors for the gradient. And that's in the palette panel and you can go obviously if you go back you can just apply it and you can see the, the very one color and two colors it sort of blends it but then you go back to the other one and it's it uses all the colors and it's a real beautiful design so now you can see here the symmetry design is just creating it's a four so it's four so you can just see it just basically just goes straight out from diagonally and you can just do apply that at each angle and you can see it matches exactly on the other side. Now at any point you can go and change the gradient. I'm just going to click on the gradient library. You can see the gradient library there. Just that little icon in the gradient panel. There's that. And that's the gradient library. And you can go through a whole range. There's quite a lot of gradients available. And you of course can manipulate the gradient as well. You can change the gradient settings and colours. So you can just go through there and explore those. You can also tweak the gradient in numerous ways such as sort of moving it along, shifting the gradient, as well as flipping the gradient, and more. So you can apply that. Now you can go and select a different brush. You can go and buy a whole range of different brushes. And with each brush, there's a whole range of different settings available. So there's size, there's first blending, there's line count, and so on and so on. So I'm just gonna go for that one. And I'm just gonna apply it. Again, you can see the actual design, maybe not so effective, that one. It's a bit, bit big. So I'm just gonna go for one that I created earlier. And you can apply that brush stroke just like that. And you can again see it's lovely symmetrical design. Just going out. I'm going to go for a new document there. So you can see it a bit clearer. Click OK. You just you don't have to start from the centre. You could of course start right at the edges. You can go around. Do a whole range of different things. With this symmetry feature. And of course I'm just using four at the moment. But I'm going to show examples like eight. It's quite nice. Maybe three or two and so on and so on. And again, just select that and then change the, maybe change it to eight. I'm gonna go for eight at this point. And now what you can see, just goes out, obviously there's eight copies there, so you can just see. It's actually quite a tangle there with all the other ones, so it's not particularly uh, visible. But again, it's a lovely symmetrical design. It's great for creating tiles. So you can create sort of tiles, you can then sort of take this, maybe export it to Photoshop, and use it in Photoshop or other applications, obviously. And you can just straight that. You can change the color at any point as it's just applying. So as you actually apply the brush, if you go and change the color, you can see you can go and say maybe turn that blue, and it will automatically change. So you're going from green and then suddenly into blue, and that's using the color. You can do the same with gradients and other settings as well. You can also change the brush mid-stroke as well. So suddenly you're applying the brush, and then suddenly as you go now you suddenly think, I'm going to use a different brush, and you can change that, and it will suddenly change. Okay, clear. Create a new document. Click OK. Again, symmetry. And I'm going to go down to two. Yep, two, and I'm going to put mirror on. So this now becomes a more square-like design. So again, you can just apply that. Again, this works with all the brushes, so all the brushes can be used. There's a whole range of different brushes. There's also flame, there's ribbon, 
whole variety of different options available. And there's also some that are in a sort of preview mode. So if you, uh, you can obviously go and check out the Flame Painter 3 Escape Motions website to uh, find out more about those. And what you can do, you can also, via the palette, you can use images. So you can see an image there. I've just got an image. There's an image library. Now, these are ones I've actually created, so I've just added those. But you can add your own images. You can sort of, if you've got PNG file, JPEG file, you can select that. Or you can select from the actual image you've created. So you can bring that in as well. And again, you can modify the repeat settings, change different settings such as line, stroke, and dots. And modify the different settings to actually see more of the effect so but you can see there's slight ver variation there depending on the option chosen now you can modify the lines count you can change the dot size i'm going to go new now click ok and apply the brush again and you can see then you can see the lines just appearing the dots appearing much clearer than before change the dot count like Lines count, I should say. Change the size. The old. Now, sometimes it can be quite slow. I mean, obviously, it's doing a lot of processing. It's doing a lot of different things. There's quite a lot of functionality behind this. So uh, it's not always super swift. Depends, obviously, on the machine, I guess. Now, also, it depends on the brush as well. So I'm just going to go for another brush. Now, this one uses gradient. It's a real, really serene. It's a very nice one. And you can, of course, change the gradient at any point. You don't have to continue with just that gradient that's been chosen. So you can just go and select another gradient in the gradient library and just apply that very quickly across all kinds of beautiful designs. It can be very quickly just by... And, of course, you can use images as well as this, as well as just solid colours as well. Don't have to use gradients. And again, this can be exported to applications such as Photoshop. I'm just going to create a new document at this point. Again, you can change the symmetry. Now I'm just going to go for three, turn the mirror off, and just apply the brush strokes. I'm just using a different brush now. And you can see the design there. Just change the colour. And you can see as soon as you change the colour, you've got suddenly go that beautiful, beautiful pink colour there just going through. And again, you modify the size. You've also got a whole range of different brush settings. You can change size, particles, the span, opacity, the stroke, sequences. That's a lot. I'm just going to go through those in other videos as well because there's just too many functions in this application to actually explore all in one video, unless I went on for an hour. So uh, you can change. And as you see, line count, you can see it changes the actual setting over there as shapes. You can change the width. You can change jitter. Length, length, jitter, and so on and so on, as well as pause and many other. And again, you can obviously change the sources for the thing. Now, this point, what you can do, you can apply there an image. I say you can what you can do, you can also create your own images. So if you've got you've got an image there, once you've actually got that, you can actually instead of just adding from a PNG file, JPEG or whatever, you can just go over to that little selection there. And what it will do, it will save that to your library that that image you got there is saved image, and then you can use that as a brush stroke very quickly and then just apply it with all the different repeat settings stroke settings etc so it's really really good for that and again all this works beautifully with the symmetry tool now you don't have to use symmetry obviously you can just use it just without any symmetry at all but the symmetry tool is a really useful thing for creating wonderful tiles background designs patterns and much, much more. Again, you can change the repeats and you can just apply that. And you can see subtle changes to that will change how, how the brush is applied. Now I'm using an art pad and pen, but of course you can do the same, much the same with a mouse as well. But it works probably best with a pen. Now, some brushes are pretty extreme, and suddenly I'm just going to select one in a sec. Just get, yep, that one. And it just goes completely out of control. But it's, again, you can modify that in numerous ways as well. So it's really useful for that. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials. And also, please add some comments. Really, really great. Thank you much.